Thank you for your time here at IBC 2024 today. I'm happy to talk uh, to you. We're at Maxon booth with Dave, uh, the CEO of Maxon. I'm really curious about all the updates Maxon has for us today. I was actually preparing to ask you some questions. Okay. I asked the community to ask some questions. And all the questions were answered with the recent <laughs> update of Cinema 4D and ZBrush. Is there anything particular you are happy and excited about? I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, the release is amazing. All of the products got great stuff. We're really, really excited about it. But I mean, we're bringing a brand new application to the iPad. And it's, and it's a full version of ZBrush. It's Academy Award winning software that's used in almost every movie and game in the world. And to bring a full version of that to the iPad is something we've wanted to do since we met the team. Yeah. And so it's been a long, hard road to get here. And the team's built such an amazing application. It's so fun to play with. It is. Um, it's just a change for the way you can think about interacting with the sculpting software. You know, and yeah, even within Wacom, you're using it. But to be able to actually just hold it, yeah, yeah, yeah. sit on your couch and actually be creative, we think it's a return to like the, you know, the base of like sketching on paper as an artist. And so we're so excited to bring that out. Well, Paul was really excited about the update. He said it's only possible because they're now part of Maxon. So. Thank you <laughs> for doing that. As from, from a user perspective, I'm a big ZBrush user. Yeah. This is big. This is huge, to be honest. Uh, I have a separate video all about ZBrush. It's amazing. I mean, we met the team and you know they asked about our vision of how we'd work together because we don't, we don't just go in and buy a company. We go and hang out with the team and figure out is there something better about the companies being together than apart. And we talked about two things. We talked about the rendering where we have Redshift and they didn't, yeah. you know, they didn't have a really great solution at the time. And then we talked about the vision for actually bringing bringing ZBrush back you know, yeah. into the hand of artists because computers have gotten so much more powerful. You don't have to be tied to a desktop anymore. You can actually do 3D creation on the road wherever you are. And I think ZBrush was the perfect ask for us to, you know, to really get it done. The, the guys from Forger are amazing and they helped us do that. So we brought them in to teach us how to do iPad applications. And then we introduced them to the ZBrush team and it's been an amazing collaboration. So I'm just, you know, we've worked on it for so long, it's so great to be able to talk about it publicly. Yeah, and it looks like a totally new product. While it's not, yeah, it's, it's the same stuff, just really enhanced, light years ahead. Uh, really well done. So that's obviously, I think, the most exciting thing for us because it's such a new product line. But I mean, the stuff we're continuing to do with simulation and Cinema 4D is we'll a lot of fun. We'll talk yeah. about that as well. Uh, so Redshift, you mentioned. You guys are now supported on Render Network, right? Correct. Are you excited about that? Because oh, absolutely, I, I, yeah. I think it will expand uh, both user use cases a lot. I'm using Render Network quite a lot. Uh, and we have an in-house in studio. So we have a lot of units. We could use that. But I'm currently extensively testing various things, including in Cinema 4D, on the network. And I think it's really exciting. It's just... Yeah, I mean, Oto is such a great partner. I mean, I've known Jules for years now. And we've been wanting to do this. We maybe maybe announced it slightly too early because it was, ended yeah. up being a little bit more work than we anticipated. But the you know the Otoy team and the Render team are amazing. We've worked with them for so long. We're really excited to get it out there. Yeah. I mean, it's important when you really need to get you know your big scenes out fast that you can scale up when you need to. Yeah. And you know to have such a convenient network that you you know that can scale to as fast as you need it to be. We've been wanting to do it for a while. It's just taken a little bit longer. So we're really happy to finally get that announced. Yeah, I think it was announced first in 2021. I mean, it's fine. It's now here. Uh, the convenient is the key here. I think supporting Cinema 4D natively, you don't have to bake anything. You just upload your scene and it renders. Previously, you, you would have to bake with Octane. You would have to yeah. bake uh, into Orbex. It's all gone. Yeah, they licensed our Cineware technology, yeah. um, which is basically all of Cinema 4D in a library that we give to a lot of our partners. Yeah. And so they use Cineware, so they have full access to the power of Cinema 4D so that they can go directly to the render network. It's and then on top of that, we worked with them to get Redshift on there. Yeah. I hope our users are going to be really excited about it. It's a lot of power available for them. It is. It is. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm just curious to, to test it all out. Uh, next question is from me. I'm uh, last half a year. I'm on M3 Mac, uh, maxed out version, testing different applications, how they behave. Some are better, some are worse. Does uh, Cinema 4D benefit a lot from new Mac, Mac ecosystem and M chips? Absolutely. So um, I'm a Mac user personally, always have been. And the 3D market has obviously been trend, you know, trending um, Windows for a long time because of the power. Cinema 4D is one of those applications that's uh, from early on. It's yeah. working really well on Mac. 
So it's, it's, it was amazing. And now with them chips. So we have a couple guys in the team who are really expert Mac programmers. Yeah. And they work very closely with Apple to make sure that whatever Apple does, we can take advantage of it. It's the same way we were able to get Redshift on on the M3 and yeah. the way we were able to get ZBrush on the iPad so far is we work very closely with Apple. They're a great partner. The chips are amazing. Yeah. And we, you know, we basically want to use the most power for any rig that an artist chooses. If you want to use a certain thing, we want to be able to take advantage of it. And so we have a, do have a lot of Mac users and we just spend a lot of time making sure that we're optimized as much as possible. So Redshift can run on metal or it can also run in the CPU depending on your needs. So we really take advantage of everything inside the M3 M4 chips. Right. Do you guys have any published tests or so or, or things um, like that? Not necessarily. We don't try to compare, you know, one rig to the other. We do have Cinebench, so everybody can do their own testing. And Cinebench is running on, you know, with Redshift also on the metal. Um, we do, try to optimize. I'll do my own <laughs> you can do your own test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, we want to make sure that it runs as fast as possible, and no matter what computer you choose. So it's not. If you want to use a Mac laptop, it should be as fast as possible. It's arbitrary if it's faster on a. $50,000 hard iron machine, it doesn't matter. It should be faster where you're running. The, the funny fact is that was from my tests, uh, even heavy lifting uh, applications run faster on my M3 MacBook than on my primary station that has 32 cores and 256 gigs of RAM. Yeah, the integrated memory does make it really it does, fast. Yeah, and yeah. It solves a lot of the problems that you get on the other machines. But we partner with all of the hardware vendors. They work with us on Cinebench so that they can make sure that the the 3D challenges we throw at the chips from Cinema and Redshift are optimized on the machines. We benefit from the fact that we have Cinebench yeah. so that our partners really help us make it fast on all the machines. Yeah. Speed and convenience. Uh, Cinema 4D is notorious for being super, the, the most convenient software in the world. Uh, and we want it to run on every single machine to the best of its yeah. ability. With the flattest learning curve, Cinema 4D. Yeah. Uh, I'm still promoting it. People ask me, how do I start 3D? I say, start with uh, Cinema because it's the easiest way to get into 3D. And it's going to be fun. And I think Cinema 4D is fun. Yeah, like, you, you really want to have fun when you start. You guys improving UI all the time or the new tools? I was particularly interested in, uh, remember Neutral? Yeah. So, so all, the, all the things that happening right now with nodes, with simulation, uh, is that part of the Neutron into, into uh, I mean, you know. I think the original code name for Neutron was actually just the nodes. Yeah. Um, but there was a lot of, um, you know, we were, Cinema was out, Maxon was out talking about what was coming next, and I don't know that they were actually really clear. They were talking about the new core. Yeah. Um, but we rolled the new core out like five or six years ago. Okay. But we didn't make a big deal out of it because a, an artist isn't going to really necessarily know what that means. And so yeah. what it is is just basically they refreshed a lot of the underpinning so that we can do all the things in Cinema 4D faster. That's really what's under there. The, the nodes use that, but so does simulation. So does um, all the tools. And, and basically, in each release, you'll see that areas of the application are 20, 30, 40% faster. Yeah. That's from the work they did on the new core. So Neutron's already done, and it's in the application. Um, we just talk about it through the features that show up or the speed that shows up as opposed to Neutron, the code name. So I it's see. all in there. It's in there. And it's all done. Uh, really impressive uh, updates on simulation stuff. You guys are heavy on particles now. Uh, I spoke to Andy, yep. the Andy Needham. He's excited. Uh, he, he's a heavy XP particles user, as well as particles for Cinema 4D. He, ha he has uh, master classes done specifically about particles in Cinema. Are there any plans on integrating uh, other systems like flip simulations? Uh, Muscle systems, uh, communities. Yeah, I saw the questions, yeah. yeah. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't say for sure that muscle's the next one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we're obviously investing very heavily. Um, in the next month or two, you're going to see even more in particles. We have some amazing stuff coming for new particle simulation in the next couple of months. Okay. But very shortly thereafter, you're going to see some um, other requested simulation systems that we haven't talked about okay. yet. Um, what, we've, what the team built was you know, a GPU independent, accelerated, simulation frameworks so it runs on it metal amd um, nvidia right but you can then build out simulations on top of it that's why we call it unified simulation engine that's why so they all work together gpu powered it's all gpu powered that's what makes it so fast yeah um and they all work together so they're built on the same systems that's why when we rolled it out you start seeing them actually work really well together you have you can have pyro burning cloth and you can have yeah. rigid bodies colliding with soft bodies it's impressive i must uh, admit yeah and so you know you might want to be able to talk about beer simulation to predict what we might be doing next. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a German company and beer is important to us. <laughs> um, so if you were talking about what we were going to simulate next, you might think in the realm of beer as opposed to muscles. But... I see. I see. Here's your hint. Yeah.
Um, while I have questions about ZBrush being more tightly integrated in the Cinema 4D, I think we have our answer from the top with, with, with Paul. Yeah, I mean, but what does a user want, right? Do they want to have ZBrush entirely in Cinema 4D or they want to use the application they love? I think that's what right. the question implied, but I would much more prefer it as a standalone exactly. like, it, like it is yep. right now, to be honest. And then uh, another popular question, like I tried to merge condensed questions into one, AI, obviously. Are you guys planning into integrating AI into specific tools or Cinema 4D in general? Good example was a popular uh, I ran 4D by Mark, Mark yep. Wilson, the idea that he had yeah. that you use it as a generator or render engine. Yeah. I mean, the joke I always make is we prefer artists to have actual intelligence instead of art, artificial intelligence. You know, we, we joke about this stuff. And we, but when you really sit down to think of it, you know, there's just all this generative AI stuff, and a lot of it is meant for low-end replacement yeah. of agency, and, and you know, we just don't subscribe to that. However, that's not to say that machine learning and generative AI doesn't have a lot of really powerful stuff that we can use our artists, give our artists to do stuff. Things. So, so what we've actually been using, you know, machine learning technologies or artificial intelligence stuff for years, right? The denoising capabilities in Red Shift are that. Um, you know, for some of the rotoscoping stuff we do in Red Giant, we're using machine learning stuff. Um, so we're, we're doing all sorts of stuff like this, and we just surface it again where it makes an artist's life better, where it makes things go faster, yeah. as opposed to just saying, oh, we're going to do AI. So we, we're not out there just saying we're going to do AI. Some of the stuff you'll see in the next time is, you know, like we have 5,000 assets in yeah. the asset browser, and it's not really easy to search that. Yeah. But you can use image recognition and text-based search to improve those kind of things. Yeah. So we look at it in the idea of what is AI that can really make an artist's workflow better, make it faster, make them more successful, because we don't want to make the machine successful, we want to make the artist successful. Yeah. So we're really about the With artist them. work, and so we never want to talk about some of this, you know, some companies out there are preaching that you can replace an artist, and we just don't believe that's possible. Creativity is a human trait, not a machine trait. Yeah. And so we're going to use this technology to, to just make artists' lives better. So you'll see stuff, yeah. but um, we're more focused on what does the artist need, and we talk to them, as opposed to just trying to preach that a machine's going to replace them. That's quite clear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with all the demos that we've seen of the update, it's still Cinema 4D is just fast turn turnaround, AAA, motion graphics, the MoGraph, uh, development too. Yep. So with that said, the next 10 years, do you think your market will change a lot or will it be primarily motion graphic uh, artists? So, well, I think if you look at our majority user base, it is motion graphics yes. for sure. Um, but by no means is that our user base. Mm -hmm. um, we're used in all sorts of stuff. We're used in jewelry design and clothing design. Broadcasting. Yeah, we're used in broad I mean, absolute broadcasting, sports graphics. We're used in VFX. We're used in games. Every Marvel movie has probably used Cinema 4D somewhere in it. So what we're seeing is in the industry around us, everybody's integrating 3D into their workflow. And since we're the easiest tool to do 3D with, they're integrating Cinema 4D into the workflow because yeah. it's not limited to motion graphics. So we're seeing lots and lots of architects um, really expand their workflow to use yeah. um, Cinema 4D in architectural visual design. Um, like I said, jewelry design, clothing design. We partner really well with Flow and we're doing amazing work with them together on clothing simulation, clothing design. Integrated into... Yeah, we, we they have a great workflow between Marvelous Designer and yeah. Cinema 4D, and Clo is on the That I'm familiar side. with, yeah. yeah. So we were I going to... you were clothing. talking yeah. about integrating them. No, so they're a great partner, and you'll see some stuff with them in the future. Yeah. Um, so wherever artists want to use 3D, we're a company for 3D, not just for motion graphics. Yeah. And so wherever 3D is going to show up as an artistic tool, we're going to be there. Yeah. Dave, uh, the last question is uh, probably the trickiest one. Um, so in the economically change challenging world, you guys recently changed the pricing pol policy. I have to admit the audience is frustrated because they don't understand what it means and what Maxon One now offers. It's just, uh, I think it's important to make it clear that users are benefiting rather than losing. Yeah, so what we've done with each of the products that have joined the Maxon family is we actually wanted to make them as most as portable. So if you go all the way back to Cinema 4D, yeah. it used to cost $4,000 to get started. I remember. And it's now you know $70 a month or whatever, depending on your currency. So we actually really want to give the entire power of Maxon One to the users at a very affordable price. So everything's included. Everything Maxon has to offer is included in Maxon One. You get ZBrush for iPad, the full version. ZBrush. You get Redshift GPU included. You get Red Giant included. You get um, all of Cinema 4D, of course, included. You get Forger. 
um, everything's there. We release capsules every single month. So, you know, we have in the last year released, I think, a thousand uh, brilliant plants and yeah. trees, you know, with redshift materials included with them. We have hundreds of new materials coming out every month from Fuchs and Fogel. We're bringing out all the new models and, um, you know, we have substance materials in there. And we're doing that every single month. We've released 250 motion graphics templates inside of um, Mac so Studio it's, it's, with our capsules. It's a lot included in one yeah. single monthly subscription payment because initially people were like what why am i no. supposed to do but then a logical question do you guys considering any tiers or for the type of artists like solo and studio would definitely be different in terms of what they can afford is there any plans to so so we, are, we actually have two tiers yeah we have individual licenses individual. which is what are available on our website and then for the bigger companies we have teams licensing which offers an additional workflow of being able to manage your group so you can you can assign the licenses to different different people in your organization you can attach it to sso and ldap we have all that functionality because we have major huge customers out there with hundreds and hundreds of users Definitely. so we have an enterprise tier that comes with different level of training and support i see and then we have the individual license and our goal is to make sure that the individual license is affordable for everybody and i know that's a conversation that people like to have on the internet what is affordable or not um, and i think where we can still do some work that we're looking at at the next year is if you look at certain areas of the world um you know salaries or currency impact has yeah, a different, different impact and it's a challenging problem for a small company so in the next year, we are looking at trying to figure out how to change, look at currencies and different prices in different regions to try to make it more affordable if you're in a lower cost area That's big. where it seems expensive or not. So we're constantly trying to do this stuff. It's just not an easy problem to solve. Oh, yeah, totally. Because, not. you know, obviously there are also people out there like to take advantage of different pricing options. So how, how do we get that right is something we're looking at. Yeah. I mean, anyway, we clarified what uh, max on one subscription means, how much it gives you. I mean, that's our answer. Yeah. Dave, last question. What's with your head printed on 3D in there? <laughs> yeah, the team also likes, we have a lot of fun at Maxon. The, the company is amazing and people really laugh. So we had um, at the Zebra Summit last year, they brought in a right. film scanner truck. Yeah. And you, they take 160 pictures of you at once. And so I got scanned and the ZBrush team took advantage of that to have some fun and it's, make fun of me getting, make fun really of cool. printing me. Yeah. Okay, Dave, yeah. thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. It's very nice to meet you. Thanks for the time. You're busy here. Yeah. I got all my answers. It's fantastic. Great. Congrats on all the updates and success. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.